think that <clears throat> we'll start and I'll call this meeting to order. I will ask for a moment of silence, please. And then um, the flag salute. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag to the of the United, United States, States of, America of America and to the Republic to for, which for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bob. Oh. We were saying that in unison today. <laughs> no. <clears throat> okay, so um, roll call vote, please. Mr. Caliguire. Here. <laughs> Ms. Darmo. Here. Mr. Doby. Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Here. Mrs. Cameron Ugian. Here. Mr. Litwack. You're on mute. <laughs> wait, wait. Here. Thank you. Here. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin. Here. And Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Okay, if you could please have the reading of statement of adequate notice. Reading of the statement of adequate notice. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Advertising yes. in the Burlington County Times and Are the Courier on? Post. Oh. Are you on down there? I think somebody, somebody out there needs to mute themselves. On January 14th, 2021, posting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on April 28th, 2021, sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on April 28th, 2021, fil filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on April 28th, 2021, and posting the notice electronically on the district website, www.delanco.com on April 28th, 2021. Thank you. Can I please have a motion for the approval of minutes for April 14th, 2021, regular and executive session meetings, please? So moved. Thank you, Second. Bob. Thank you, Vince. That's, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Questions or comments? OK. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, thank you. Um, can I have a please have a motion to accept the reports of secretary and treasurer for March, 2021, which are in agreement? Motion. Second. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Bob. Questions or comments? I have a question on um, exhibit C. It's on page 18 of the public packet. We have a uh, Title I funding, Title II, Title IV, Title III is missing. From what I understand, our October 15th student numbers for ESL give us our Title III funding. So I'm wondering why is that missing on page 18? Anyone want to answer that question? I don't have it open in front of me. I, I well, it's it's missing. So why I can look into no... it and then I can reply to the board, but I don't have that open. So also, my other question is um, also on Exhibit C, page nine. It says the original budget for the total bilingual instruction was thirty nine thousand one hundred and fifty eight. So I was wondering, where did we get that number from? From Was that from our October 15th ESL student count? Would anyone like to answer that question? Again, um, I don't have that information in front of me. I can look into it and get back to you. But is the budget for bilingual instruction, just as a general question, that is from our October 15th ESL student count, correct? You don't know? 
Okay, you don't um, know. You had, you had um, since last Friday to ask me that question, and I could have looked it up and given you the answer well, through email, through a phone what call. I was told in, our, in a meeting, a policy meeting, or it might have been a different subcommittee meeting, is that I was asking you too many questions in emails, so I refrained from doing that. That's why I'm bringing it up now. Well, we had an ethics training by Jesse Adams who said that you shouldn't bring questions up like that during a meeting. So there's proper way to, to go about these things. Thank I you. I didn't think this one needed a lot of research. Then you could have done it. Yep. Okay, well, we're gonna, um, Vicki's gonna look into that and then we're just gonna move on and we will, if there are no other questions or comments, then I will- Oh, I'm sorry, um, I just, just wanna make a quick comment, I'm sorry. Um, I'm assuming the numbers I'm seeing are for years of service and it's teacher appreciation week and I want to thank the teachers for their years of service, especially people in those 20s boy. I know how that. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, Dharma opposed. Thank you. Abstain. All right, motion carries. Thank you very much. Liaison reports. Is there anybody who has information regarding the Riverside High School? Do we have um, a Riverside student that is um, present? All right, Delanco PTO. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, even though uh, Miss, Mrs. Kamenugian, even though the PTO is not here to share any updates, I do want to take a moment to say thank you to the PTO. They have generously and thoughtfully provided lunch for the staff tomorrow. Uh, and so as part of staff appreciation, we, so I just wanted to take a moment to thank our PTO for, for being very generous, generous and thoughtful with that. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody from DISA? Recreation and or the Township Committee. Hey, Marissa, Matt Barthens on from DISA. Uh, we're currently in the middle of our softball season and baseball and t-ball. We got about uh, three and a half weeks left. Everything is going successfully and safely. It's, it's a great season. All the kids are enjoying getting out there, seeing their friends, getting some uh, physical activity on. Uh, we got a bunch of games this week over the weekend and the next couple weeks. So if anyone's around, please feel free to come down to uh, Avenue, Wamsley and Riverside, and you can watch uh, the students and their friends uh, play some ball. It's uh, been going great, uh, nice and safe. And I uh, just want to touch real quick, uh, town committee a couple nights ago uh, when they were discussing having a parade, it was brought up that uh, youth sports are a hotbed for COVID right now. And uh, you may have saw my uh, post on Facebook, some of you, but DISA is operating an incredibly safe program. We've had zero issues this season. We've had zero issues in our 2020 soccer season. And you know, there's just no issues with our, our program. And I actually talked to Dr. Herb Conway today and he even confirmed that there is no hotbed of COVID issues with youth sports. So I just wanted, for all the parents that are on here and all the teachers and everyone else, we just want to you know, relay that uh, just so there's no misinformation being put out there from other boards. Thank you. Thanks, Marissa. Actually, Colonel Actually, Lett from the Township Patrick. Committee. No, oh. hey, sorry, Fern. I was going to report on Rec, so I'll wait till you're done. Oh, I'm sorry, Kate. Okay, uh, just wanted to announce that the uh, committee voted uh, for the parade to go on uh, May 30th, Sunday uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, we discussed cannabis uh, and the ordinance. And again, that's uh, going into further discussion on uh, our May 17th meeting. And our uh, township uh, budget, the auditor will be with us uh, on May the 17th for uh, the budget for the township. That's all I have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kate? Actually, uh, Fern reported on my rec uh, as far as the Recreation Commission will be holding the annual parade. We're very thrilled about that. It wasn't a unanimous vote on township committee, but we did win the vote. So that's a good thing. 
Um, the other thing I would like to do, I would also like to congratulate the teachers. This is uh, a week recognizing their service. Um, I think we all appreciate what they do for our children. After all, they are our future. So thank you to all the teachers that are on this meeting tonight and also who couldn't attend, just know that uh, we do appreciate you. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, I appreciate that. So I will now open this for the president's message. So um, hello everyone and thank you for joining us this evening. In honor of Teacher Appreciation Week, I wanted to take a brief moment on behalf of our school board to thank our teachers. Each of us feel that the teachers play a key role in our children's lives and have a major share in shaping it. They nurture talent, cultivate young minds, and help develop successful individuals. They teach our children what it means to be successful while at the same time exposing them to their first taste of competition. They teach our children to dream big and to never fear failure. They are there for them whenever they need them. They see our children grow and support them in their desire to be better. There is no better example of this than tonight's student recognition presentation. So without further ado, Mr. Mersinger, I will extend the next part of our meeting over to you so that you can present the awards for this evening's Student of the Month, Mr. Mersinger. Actually, yes, I'm moving it over to you now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Karanugi, and I appreciate that. I also want to echo your sentiments about our staff members. Uh, this is National Teacher Appreciation Week. Just yesterday, Tuesday, May 4th was uh, besides being Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you, uh, it was also National Teacher uh, Recognition Day, So, or sorry, uh, Teacher Appreciation Day. And, and I believe it's important for us to recognize the contribution of our teachers here in Delanco. I sent a brief message to the staff, but th the words that I use, it, they're really not enough to express what I truly feel about teachers uh, here in Delanco. And, and I said in my message that when I was growing up in Roebling, uh, Roebling, my, my heroes were my teachers. And I know that there are students here in Delanco that feel the same way about the teachers that are here in our community and, and that are here in this meeting right now. So I appreciate the teachers for everything that you're doing and, and, and all staff members, especially now. This is one of the toughest times we've ever seen in public education and I appreciate all of your efforts. And so um, thank you very much. I mean, again, the words just are not enough. I, it's just, this is a heartfelt thank you to all of our teachers. And so uh, we have students that we're recognizing tonight because they were nominated by teachers. And uh, the teachers gave this a lot of thought when it comes to who should be recognized. So again, thank you to our teachers for that. Also, I want to take a moment to thank the families for nurturing these values and these character traits within the students uh, so that they could be nominated and recognized tonight. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to list the students. And so we'll start with Walnut Street Middle School. And there are some students that, being that are being recognized for being excellent writers. And we have two students here listed. They are Leilana Weitenheimer and Caitlin Ortiz. Congratulations to those two students. Next, uh, for Walnut, we have a fantastic mathematician. That student is Kayla Arnold. Congratulations. Uh, next at Walnut, we have most conscientious student, and that is Michaela Petrosky. Congratulations. Uh, so again, keep, um, moving on to, to uh, great perseverance. Uh, that, this is a student that is working hard through the challenges, and that is John Salerno. Congratulations to John. Next, uh, at Walnut, there is a period in the beginning of the day called the advisory period, where the students and staff members focus on social emotional learning and other activities. And so the advisory all-star for Walnut for this month is Jason Hubler. Congratulations to Jason. Next, we have a stupendous scientist that's being selected by Walnut, and that is Christian Ochoa. Congratulations to Christian. Uh, we have a couple of athletes that are being recognized uh, by Walnut as well, and they are Lucas Silvestri and Christopher Easton. Congratulations to those two young men. And next, uh, moving on to dedicated student. 
so the, the dedicated student for this month selected by Walnut is Shia Tori. Congratulations to Shia. And last but not least, we have a student who's being recognized for perfect participation at Walnut. And that student is Hannah Tusillo. Congratulations to Hannah. Congratulations to all of the students at Walnut that were nominated. Once again, thank you to the teachers for nominating these students and selecting them. Next, we're gonna be moving on to Pearson. And so at Pearson, instead of just focusing on particular attributes like writing and math and uh, perseverance and whatnot, uh, for, for Pearson students, the teacher is selecting a student that's doing well, working hard, uh, being respectful, basically a well-rounded student that's doing a nice job right now during this very challenging time, because even though we have in-person instruction, we also still have virtual instruction. So uh, at Pearson, we want to recognize the students that are doing great with the current program. And so here we are for kindergarten, for Mrs. Arangio's class, it is Daniel Kurtz. Congratulations to Daniel. For Mrs. Crozier's class, we have Emerson James. Congratulations, Emerson. Moving on to first grade, for Miss Smith's class, we have Rain Rondomansky. Congratulations to Rain. And now to Mrs. Weller's class for first grade, we have Michaela Slater. Congratulations, Michaela. Moving now on to uh, second grade, we have Ms. Lipinski's class. The student nominated was Mary Grace Hessen. Congratulations to Mary Grace. Now we have Mrs. McCann's class for second grade. The student is Khaleesi Turner. Congratulations to Khaleesi. And in third grade, we have uh, Mrs. Barbara and Mr. Castelli's class. And the student nominated for this month is Carmelo Garcia. Congratulations, Carmelo. Third grade, Mrs. Fitzwater's class. The student that's being recognized this month is Braden Fanelli. Congratulations to Braden. Moving on to fourth grade, we have Mr. Stockton's class, and the student selected is Eric Schaefer. Congratulations to Eric. Uh, fourth grade, Miss Wallace's class. And we have a student here that was selected. It is Joshua Walker. Congratulations to Joshua. And now last but not least, we're moving on to fifth grade. We have two homerooms. So for Mrs. Brendel and Miss Letton's class, we have Jason Russo. Congratulations to Jason. And finally, uh, for Mrs. Guckin's fifth grade class, the student being recognized is Cameron Lilliston. Congratulations to Cameron. In a typical month, we would give certificates to the students during the board meeting. Uh, I've been speaking with the principals about this. You know, at some point, we're going to move forward and have in-person board meetings in the future where we can give out the certificates. It's not happening this month, uh, but it will be happening at some point in the future. But the students will receive their certificates either in school or through the mail if they are virtual. So congratulations once again to all of our students. You're doing a fantastic job during a very challenging time. And uh, again, thank you to the families and thank you to the staff members as well. So Mrs. Karamanugian, thank you as well. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to open the meeting up for public comment on agenda items only, please. We do have the one- uh, Yes comment from online, Mrs. Cameron? Yes, you're correct. Um, it is from Mrs. Foley, and she mentioned, Miss LaSalle, thank you for your time and service and hard work. You will be missed. Thank you. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. And I'll save the other one for the later in the meeting. That's, that's referring to the agenda item later on on personnel. That yes. shows that Ms. LaSalle is resigning from her role as business administrator. And again, I want to echo those sentiments. Thank you to Ms. LaSalle for all of your hard work and dedication to Delanco. I agree. Okay. Um, is there anybody else who would like to comment on an agenda item? Okay. If not, I will close that section and then move right on to the budget public hearing and adoption. 
and I need a motion to open up the public hearing aspect of this hearing and adoption. So moved. Second. Second. Good. Bye, Vince. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Vince. I appreciate that. All right. Um, do we need to vote to open this up? I don't think so, right? I think that's just a, a no. All right, so Vicki, you wanted to, um, did you want to begin the presentation, the budget pre presentation? I believe we had to vote on it, Marissa. Right, that's, oh, we do have to vote on that app to open it? Okay, then we'll vote on it. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Opposed? Abstain. Okay, that motion carries. Thank you. Bill. <laughs> okay, Vicki, now I'm opening this up for you to um, present the budget presentation. Okay, do you see the budget presentation? Yes. Okay, so it looks like a blue screen when I do that. <laughs> okay. So this is your 2021-22 uh, budget presentation. Um, I'm going to show you that what the revenues are made up of. Um, there we go, revenue overview. The revenue sources are the tax levy, the state aid, library rental, audited excess surplus. The appropriations are made up of salaries, benefits, tuition, transportation, capital outlay, and other, which is um, supplies, professional services, travel, things like that. The um, budget overview. So the tax levy that we're proposing to raise is 6,675,848. It's a 3% increase over the prior year, and it does include the use of banked cap. Um, state aid number is 2,820,844. Um, extraordinary aid is budgeted as flat because you don't, won't know until mid to late year uh, how much we're going to receive for that. The library rental fee we kept flat also. Um, we have miscellaneous revenue. It's down 50000 because we are not hosting the after school program next year. Um, we are using budgeted excess surplus of 424,000. Salaries, um, you will see a decrease in the salaries of over 400,000. And that is due to um, a reduction in force of 5.2 FTEs. Uh, there's a corresponding reduction in the benefits um, we are anticipating an increase in tuition costs of 65,000. So uh, total tuition would be 3,687,000. Um, we're anticipating an increase of 60,000 in transportation costs. Um, capital outlay will remain flat. And then there's a decrease in the other expenses, partially due to um, some of the ESSER funds alleviating some of the budget items. The tax impact is um, seen on this slide. Um, it's a 3.17% increase. Um, the average homeowner at 190,000 would see an increase of $58.86 for the year or $4.91 a month. Uh, district, district highlights, we will have some minimal upgrades in security which are confidential, we can't really discuss that. Um, the grant funding that's coming in will go towards learning acceleration initiatives. The administration is working hard to uh, pull that together. Um, it will support mental health initiatives and training and professional development for the staff. It'll include ESY programs and it is supporting the budget um, in salary items. Um, and that's all I have for the budget presentation. Does anybody have any questions?
Marissa, can the public ask questions at this point? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, Who's I have speaking? Question. Who is speaking? That was Kate. Kate, Kate Could Fitzpatrick. Could you please identify yourself? Kate Fitzpatrick, 225 Rancocas Avenue. Thank um, you. The initial, the, um, the funds that Delanco will be receiving um, because of the, I guess it's the, uh, because of the pandemic, $558,000. Um, when do you anticipate receiving that? And will you be able to accept that into this year's budget in order to maybe bring back some staff? How will those funds be allocated? I, um, because that's a substantial amount of money that you'll be receiving. And I was hoping you would get to receive it before you had to introduce your budget. I did look into the guidelines and the dates are pretty stringent where you can't actually extend the date to submit your budget. And I've talked with um, some other administrators uh, that previously worked in Delanco. No offense, Vicki, you worked with these people as well just to try to get uh, an idea of why the state is requiring this budget to be passed now when they know that many districts will be receiving additional funds that will help our children. Because for us to have to lay off staff, teachers, how does that help our children? So how can we recover that? Or what is the district's plan when we get those funds. Anybody? Joe. Kate, I, I, um, I appreciate this comment or question that you have. I, I, I've discussed it over the past few months. Uh, the ARP funds, American Rescue Plan, uh, there, there have been many newspaper articles about this since March. We did not receive any kind of official communication from the Department of Ed until just last week. When we did, they gave us a list of the allowable uses, but they didn't give us a timeline for receiving the funds. I've been communicating with Andy Kim and his team, with the county office team, numerous times over the past three months. We do not have a timeline to receive the funds. So I've also asked, can we have an extension for our budget timeline? The answer was no. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, we, we've made efforts to do what we can to change the budget timeline or get the money quicker. Uh, but there's only so much we can do when we're waiting for the federal government to give money to the state and then the state to give money to us. Uh, but the plan is when those funds are received uh, is to use those funds based on the allowable uses, uh, which the allowable uses are, are pretty specific. Uh, one of them talks about uh, recovering learning loss, uh, so basically putting staff members in place to assist students with any learning loss that took place over the past year or so, and then also uh, doing upgrades that still relate to health and safety related to COVID-19, as well as, you know, various other uses that we still need to learn about because we just received the message yesterday, or last week, sorry, but no matter what, um, you know, when, when we say what is the district's plan, the district's plan is to follow the guidance that we're given by the county and the state in this regard, and then look at how can, how can we spend the money we receive. But we can't really develop a true plan because the money that's being advertised in newspaper articles, that may not be the money we receive. We've been told that we, we might only get half now and half a year from now. So that this is, this is all the information that's still unclear to us over the past few months, but um, we're, it's slowly, the picture is slowly becoming clearer and clearer. Thank you, Joe. Um, I, I, I think it's unfair that the district is suffering as a result of this because we really need the funds and it would help our kids out. And I understand why we have these problems, um, some of these financial problems, and it certainly is, um, no one's fault because we're all under state rules and regulations and laws. So, but I, I appreciate um, that. I've only been listening to the meetings. I haven't actually signed in on them because I'm not the liaison this year, but I want you to know that I have listened to them and I do appreciate what the board 
is doing and is trying to doing. So um, thank you. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say thank you, Kate, for your good efforts on this issue. And um, I share your, I mean, it's a frustrating situation. It is, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Is there anybody else that has any comment on the budget presentation? Just want to thank Vicki for her hard work in preparing us. Uh, for the public and for the uh, members of the school board. Thank you. Okay, if there is nobody else, I will close the public aspect of that hearing and I need a motion to close the public. So moved. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Thank you Harry. Um, questions or comments about closing that aspect of the presentation? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. The adoption of the 2021 2022 final budget. Be it resolved that the final budget be approved for the 2021 2022 school year using the 2021 2022 state aid figures and the secretary to the Board of Education be authorized to submit the following bu final budget to the Executive County Superintendent of Schools. Please see the numbers below. And be it further resolved that the Delanco Township Board of Education includes in the budget the use of banked cap in the amount of $65,010. The purpose of the banked cap is to continue to provide resources to our school as they meet the needs of our pupils in the areas of tuition costs, transportation, and teaching resources. The use of this bank cap cannot be deferred or incrementally completed over time. Be it further resolved that the proposed base budget exceeds the state's adequacy budget. I need a motion, please. So I'm move. Second. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, who um, was the first person to say it? I think Bill. Yep, okay. I'm motion. Thank you. And then Bob seconded it. Thank you. Questions or comments? Okay, this is a roll call vote, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I make, can I make my comment when I make my vote to explain my vote? No, you can just make it right now. Okay. My, I have to make my comment now. Okay. We'll my comment it. now is that according to um, something that's an open public record, the current legal contract of the CSA is for his duty to be principal and superintendent. That is the current legal contract. It has not been revised by the board. The past board president and the present board president have not called on that contract to be revised. Uh, therefore, that um, that's one reason I'm voting no on this budget because I feel we're paying twice for our Walnut principal when the principal should be uh, the current the CSA, and that is in the current contract. That's my comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll make a quick comment too. Um, is that accurate? We, vote, is, we voted. We voted on. Um, we voted on him to be in that position with that title, and we were advised by council we did not have to revise his contract at that time. So um, and we haven't revised it since. I don't know why. Right, because we didn't have to. Steve, um, what was your comment? Sure. Yeah. I'm, so I'll be voting no on the budget um, because it, it seems obvious to me that the, the teachers are the backbone of our schools. Um, we've already cut teachers and programs to the bone. And so to me, cutting this many teachers is just not the right move. Um, I think we could have done things differently. So, Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Maris. Um, this, 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 what we're facing right now has been accumulation of, of years of this, you know, but it's facing these short budgets and, you know, talking to people in town, you're not as ever, people know I have kids in the school and parents have kids in school we're all concerned we're especially concerned when it comes after everything with COVID and um, especially if kids in the middle school you know the I, I want to say this I want to say the town needs to take the, the, the children and their education seriously I, I don't think we do it's not a priority it's not a priority in our budget um, as a town it's not a priority way we spend we, we spend with least amounts out of out of the county and it's it's been years of this and 
just so folks understand, you know, we're, we're facing a school, we're facing a budget. What we're voting on right now is taking away sports activities, teachers from a suburban middle-class town school. You wouldn't see this in, in, in major cities where they're, you know, they have violence and everything else. Why is it happening here? Why do we have such a low priority in, in how we treat the kids in this town, the education? You're going to see results from this. You know, you're going to have kids that, that, that aren't able to compete with some other schools. I could see it with my kids. And a lot of parents are concerned about it. You know, everyone who's on the board, I know you take your old job seriously and everything. We need you to take into context of a parent, and what they're facing here. And, and I agree with Steve, the teachers here have like been, a, been a salvation for us here. Um, what they've been doing and, and teaching and the way they, you know, I see what my kids and the way they approach them and everything else, um, you, you know, I appreciate it and the job they do. And we, we need to support the school better. Like what we're voting on now is just a sample of this folks. If anyone doesn't think this is important or because you don't have kids in the school, it's not important. You, you're gonna see it anyway. You see these little increases we're doing every year. That's just gonna be the way it goes till we catch up. We have to invest in the school. We have to invest in the system. If we don't, we're, we're on a path of self-destruction here. We're already way on that path. And, you know, like a lot of other parents, I have to look at other options for education. When you're looking at what your schools are, some people in town don't have that option. So it's a, it's a serious vote. My vote's going to be no on it, but um, I, I would like town officials, ones who are on here, some of them talked to me and expressed how concerned they are, but the way you're concerned is to help us out, getting us more money so that we could, we, the school could just be able to compete because we can't compete right now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, roll call vote, please. Mr. Caliguire. I vote no. Ms. Darmo. No. Mr. Dovey. Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Karmanugian. Yes. Mr. Litwick. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. No. Mrs. Tersich Keeley is not here. Okay, motion carries. Superintendent's report, Mr. Marsinger. All right, thank you, Mrs. Karmanugian. Uh, here we have the superintendent's report. Uh, a motion is requested to approve the following items, letters A through H. I have no additional commentary at this time, so uh, a motion is requested for that. So moved. Thank you, Bob. Second. Thank you, Cameron. Questions or comments? Uh, Vera Dharma has a, a question. In the reopening plan referenced on letter F, um, eligible ESL students are going to be allowed to attend four days a week, um, I believe in grades K through six, um, maybe seventh and eighth, no, K through six. How are you determining who are these eligible ESL students? Uh, firstly, all ESL students are eligible for four days of instruction. So it's any student K through eight that has ESL services. Okay, so how did you determine that they were they qualify for ESL services? The students are assessed using the access for ELLs assessment on an annual basis. The students also uh, have an ESL screening that takes place. There's also a home language survey that we conduct so there are multiple measures. And as, as the board is aware, we do now have a teacher in the position who uh, the official title is substitute, but the teacher is in the position now, she's in a program for ESL cert certificate and is already a certified teacher. So uh, that teacher uh, is doing a nice job with that. Prior to that, we had Mr. Costelli for uh, over a year. Uh, he did a nice job. Uh, Mr. Caselli has been a, a valuable member of our substitute population for, for a number of years because he helps us in many ways. So, you know, we, we basically had those two individuals working on it over the past two years. So you did give the access test this year? 
we are implementing the access test this year, yes. Uh, of this school year? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, if uh, I may, uh, yeah, uh, Ms. Sure. Karen Nugent, uh, would it be possible to vote separately on the reopening plan, just to pull that out of the list? Or, or I can I can just, um, I can vote separately on that letter, whatever is more convenient. You can, you can, you can either oppose or abstain um, yeah. I, in your vote, still, that's fine. Okay, I still have concerns about the current reopening plan. I know I'm in the minority on this board. Um, and so I'm, I don't need to elaborate too much, but. Um, okay, no, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Well, I just have one additional question. Um, mm -hmm. Why uh, K through six are going four days a week with Wednesday um, virtual? Why were why are seventh and eighth um, going two days in person a week? I was just wondering about that thought process. Ms. Dormo, you received an email with a clear explanation for why this is the case. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. I, I apologize. But um, for the public, could you, or maybe they already know? Well, uh, the, I can explain for everyone's benefit right now that we would love to have seventh and eighth graders in four days a week. The issue is our seventh and eighth grade populations are larger and we need the space and we need the staffing and we need the guidance from the health department to all align in order for seventh and eighth grade to have those four days a week. Uh, we were not able to make that happen. Uh, we, we looked at it in many, in many different ways over the past three months from many different angles. And we determined that we could make it happen for certain grade levels, but not for others. So it is unfortunate that seventh and eighth grade is not part of that, uh, that next step that we took. However, uh, it's based on the numbers, not based on personal preferences, not based on opinions. It's based on what do the numbers tell us when it comes to students in the classroom, how many, how much space we have and how many staff members we have. Okay, thank you. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Phil, were you all in favor or opposed? I was in favor. I couldn't get Ooh. to my button quick enough. That's okay, no problem. I just want that clarification. Um, opposed? Abstain. Motion. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 I just want to specify. Um, I'm voting yes for everything except for uh, item F, the reopening plan. I'm voting no. Okay. On that. Okay. You're voting opposing that letter F. Okay. Thank you. Anybody abstain? Okay. The motion carries. Instruction and program committee. CST BOE update reclassifications and placements confidential exhibit L. Mr. Litwack, Finance Committee report, please. Well, hope we get it up here. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. I move that we approve. I can't see it. Okay. Do you want me to read it for you? Harry, did you want me to read it for you? Okay, I'm gonna read it. I make a motion to approve the following line items. A, necessary line item transfers for March, 2021. Exhibit M, monthly line account certification for March, 2021. C, payment of bills in the amount of 423,571 and 25 cents as attached, exhibit N. D, joint transportation agreement for public, non-public and vocational schools, special education summer schools and special education winter bus routes with Burlington County Educational Services Unit for the 2021-2022 school year, exhibit O. E, nursing services contract with Starlight Home Care Agency to serve as a one-to-one -one nurse for one student from 7 one to 6 22 at an hourly rate of $60 for RN and 48 hours for LPN. F, special education services contract with Brett Devon, excuse me, DeNovi and Associates for one-to-one -one registered behavior technician services for one student from 4 21 
the 63021 at an annual rate of 9,900 prorated for a clinical associate and 2,250 prorated for a behavioral consultant. G, homeless tuition contract for the 2021, excuse me, 2020, 2021 school year with Burlington Township Board of Education for one student to attend Burlington Township Schools for the period of 1-17-2021 to 6-22-2021 at an annual rate of $7,756.84 prorated. H, transportation with educational services unit to provide transportation for one student for the period 125 through 630 2021 at an estimated amount of 19,920 prorated approval of tax levy schedule for submission to the Delanco Township Exhibit P, J, Nutriserve's monthly report for March 2021 Exhibit Q, and K, the ratification of bills paid in the amount of $7,159.11 with checks 2200, Exhibit R. I make that motion. Second. Thank you, Bob. Questions or comments? Here, Darmo. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody else want to go first? No. Um, right. Letter <laughs> Letter J, the NutriServe monthly report. Um, since we're being reimbursed um, for the free meals, uh, do we have any expenses that we have to pay out of pocket? It was hard for me to, to understand. I mean, I, I feel like you almost have to be an accountant. Um, if you need to research that and get back to me, that's fine. I, I don't hear anything. Um, also, maybe another one for you to research is um, I saw that we had a, a payment to a legal firm, uh, Connell or Connell and Foley. Uh, for general administrative legal services. And I was just curious because I thought our lawyer was Parker McKay. So if you need to research that and get back to me, I would appreciate it. Those are my two questions. And that's it. Okay. I have a question, Marissa. Yes. The uh, special education, uh, the, like the joint transportation, the special education costs, the homeless tuition, was, does anybody know if that was all budgeted for or these new surprises here also? Vicki, do you know specifically? If, uh, which ones are you referring to? Transportation. The, the transportation, the special education contract and the homeless tuition contract, were they budgeted for or these? Once for the current year, F was not budgeted. G actually was budgeted. And H is, um, H was not budgeted. Okay, um, Marissa, would you mind if I go off on a little rant here for a minute? Okay, under questions and comments, sure. Yes, um, folks, Every month we go through this with the finance and what extra costs cost us. And if you notice over a period of the last couple of years, some of our costs are increasing. That's why we're in trouble. Some of the special education costs, and I've said it many a time, I think the state of New Jersey should be picking it up. It gets to a point where when you're financed, some of the things that you're paying for are costing more than what it's costing you to educate your children, then it comes to your budget time and we have to cut. And that's how we get into this situation every year. Everyone out there, I tell you, call our senators, call our assemblymen. They have to change the way things are funded in this state. I mean, if you let, if you took the special education budget out of Delanco School District, we would be able to provide every service for our children and we'd able to be able to hire more teachers and I think it would be great. But it seems like every K through eight district, the noose is getting tighter around our neck every year and every single one of us board members has a hard time doing this. It is very upsetting for us because we're affecting people's lives and it, it, it drives us nuts and I wish there was a better way we could do it. I agree that children are extremely important to our schools. I agree our teachers are extremely important. Most of us have had children that have gone through the schools and very pleased with the education they'd receive. But something has to be done on a state level to give us more money because if we keep going the way we are, every year it's gonna be the same thing. 
that's the end of my rant, Marissa. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Remember in November. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how we're going to fix it, Phil. Okay. I sure really hope so. Uh, hope for this guy. Small comment there. I, um, I, I, I think uh, Mr. Jenkins, you're coming from a, a good place, but I think there are systemic issues with the idea of, of um, having the state handle special education funding for everyone. And really what it would mean would be that state taxes would go up for everyone across New Jersey. So I don't, I don't really see how that would help. I, I, I would observe that um, a lot of the dollars that we're spending on special education are, are um, going to specialized facilities and specialized businesses, um, basically private businesses. So I would, you know, looking forward longer term, I think that bringing some of that back into our school district and, and, and uh, into you know, public jobs instead of sending money to private companies would be my preferred way of, of thinking about that issue. But, but yeah, it's definitely a vexing situation. I would like to um, support what Steve McLaughlin said. And I hope, um, I know that the board as a whole is trying to think of how to bring special ed back when wherever feasible. And I'm hoping that we can have a, a report to the full board on things like room usage, if we have to hire any new teachers, I hope we could have um, a report about this to the full board. Thank you. Uh, may I speak? Sure. May I speak, Marissa? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. People need to better educate yourself about special education funding. What is from the state? What is from the federal? you know, to say it's the state's doing when this, it's a federal law that applies to special education and cost and how it is supposed to be operating. And there are guidelines and rules that are not based on cost, but are based on children's needs and educating them. And if every community in America just said, fine, we're not gonna educate anyone with special needs. Uh, how would that work? It's, it's, you know, it's nice to have a scapegoat, but it doesn't, you know, and yeah, it, it, Phil's not wrong, Steve's not wrong, it causes problems. But as long as we have to go by certain guidelines and the state is not um, able to get the federal funding, I mean, I've heard, senators on television misinform the people, misinform people about saying, oh, well, we're, you know, it's, uh, we're giving them 6% increase that they never had, but they never had it because it wasn't, they were supposed to be getting it and they never got it. You know, we're supposed to be receiving much more funding from federal sources. It's an unfunded mandate and now it seems there's going to be a little catch up with all the money that's being uh, tossed around from Washington to the state, to the county, to the local districts. But it's a, a structural problem in the system. And it's not our problem alone. You know, it's other districts. And some of it is just size, the size of our district. And unfortunately, there was uh, a um, building that went on in the township that greatly affected our cost. And it was done without really um, alerting the, the school system how the effect might be. And, you know, I ride my bike through those new houses going up and I sure hope they get sold that quickly, but uh, I don't see it, but hey, I don't read the future, but please get better informed about how and where the problem actually is. So, you know, this, and, and it, the state legislators hear that. They hear it from constituents, they hear it from township members, they hear it from school boards, they hear it from the NJEA, the School Boards Association, they're not without knowing. And one of the things that may be going on is the reason there, there has never been a coordinated time between budgets and educational budgets in the state. 
And I have a feeling at this point, it's while the um, exposure is there and the state is calling for uh, regionalization and calling for more combined services, that this is a way of pushing, you know, pushing districts, pushing towns into realizing you're going to have to do something different in the future. So um, as a light, you know, pretty much a lifelong advocate for special needs, uh, children, education, um, they, it's great that we can provide what we can provide for them now. When this was done for our special education populations 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, this was not what they received. It costs a lot to educate people who need very intensive, specific training. And is it the society, you know, a different question, is it the society's role to do that? And if not, then who does do that? And if it is society's role, that means it's government at all levels and school boards, townships, et cetera. So that's, uh, and there's some other information that, um, that I, that may be helpful. I think it was what Joe was saying about splitting it over two years. I think there was some intent for that in one of my notes that I'll talk about later. Okay. So, but special ed is, it costs. There's no offense or buts of transportation costs and everybody is affected by it. Not just the Lanco. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments at this time? Awesome. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm splitting my vote Aye. at the end. Okay. Um, opposed? Fully? Vince, you're opposed fully? Okay. Um, anybody abstain? Okay, Vera? A through C, no. D through H, yes. I through K, no. Okay. Motion carries. Operations and Facilities Committee Report, Mr. Kellier. Thank you. Uh, operations and uh, Facilities Committee Report for April. Uh, routine maintenance activities, spring break for six days. Those are hybrid sessions due to the coronavirus. Mow and weed whack both schools. Completion of work orders needed. Special projects serviced all lawn equipment for the season, moved all unnecessary furniture out of the classrooms at Pearson to allow more students into classrooms and checked and serviced all rooftop fans. Uh, a special thanks to all the guys doing that work. They do a great job. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Policy committee report, Ms. Dormel. No report at this time. Thank you. Personnel committee report, Mr. C. Jenkins. I'd like to make a motion to approve the following. A, the Board of Education is legally permitted to abolish or reduce certain staff positions in accordance with the provisions of NJFA 18A colon 28-9 at sequential. As such, certain staff positions have been abolished or reduced per attached exhibit C. B, extend unpaid sick leave of absence from Michael Corp Coburn Maintenance supervisor beginning half day January 5th, 21, with an anticipated end date of May 20th, 21. This item was previously approved at the 31020 board meeting. C, the resignation of Victoria LaSalle, business administrator, effective June 30th, 21. D, resignation of James Heiser, qualified purchasing agent, effective June 30, 21. E, non affiliated salary guide and benefits schedule for 21 22, exhibit U. F, salaries for DTEA teachers for 21-22 per attached list, exhibit V. G, salaries for DTEA support staff for 21-22 per attached list, exhibit W. H, salaries for non-DTEA personnel for 21-22 per attached list, exhibit X. I, professional development travel, exhibit Y. And J, the substitute list revisions, exhibit Z. I make the motion. Second. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Cameron. Questions or comments? Just a comment, Madam President, that we're going to be sad to see Vicki and James go. So uh, we wish you the best, guys. 
Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. I agree. I have one comment also, Vicki. Uh, this is for Vicki and James. It's been a pleasure working with you. Your expertise and knowledge has been extremely you know, helpful to this district. We're going to be at a loss once you guys leave. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Okay, this is also a roll call vote, please. Mr. Calaguire. I vote no. Ms. Darmo. I vote no on letter A and yes on lines uh, for letters B through J. Which A? Wait, um, you said um, she no voted for no. letter A. Right. Yes, for letters B through J. Okay, I thought you said C through J. Oh, sorry. Um, Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Mrs. Cameron Ugian? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? I vote the same as uh, Ms. Darmo. Uh, no on A and, and yes on B through J. Thank you. And Ms. Tarsich Kili is not here. Is, if I may, what, what is A? a. What, what is it? What's the substance yeah. of it? It's just the. Um, the legally that we're legally permitted to reduce our force if necessary. That we're legally permitted to abolish or reduce certain staff positions in accordance with the provisions of NJSA. That one. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Board liaison reports, Mr. C. Jenkins. All right. So I still can't really speak much about the hiring process for the Riverside superintendent other than it is ongoing and will be hopefully concluded sooner rather than later. Uh, we haven't had our regular meeting for the month, but uh, all of last month we conducted interviews for potential candidates for superintendents. At the same time, there are also interviews going forth for Riverside's uh, business administrator as their current BA is retiring as well. But um, it's, it's mainly just business as usual. As soon as a more comprehensive, I'm allowed to legally say more of what's going on, I will dutifully inform the board. Thank you, Cameron. That is all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Litwack, NJSBA and BCSBA information, please. Yeah, uh, there was a countywide meeting on the 25th, and um, there was a, it's about the, the um, upcoming meetings about where they're going to have the, they did a video on unsung heroes, and also for the eighth grade dialogue, they ended up doing it differently. There's like 32 videos because they had smaller groups of kids. So I think we were involved with that. Joe, I think we had someone there, correct? Can you say that again? The um, eighth grade dialogue, they did videos. Did we, did we have participant from Belanco involved? Yes, we did. We did have a participant for the eighth grade dialogue and it was Morgan Renson, an eighth oh. grader who is doing a great job this year, and I'm sure her parents are very proud, but yeah. have not received the video yet. Well, no, that's what, that's what the, the, the haven't the been board. released yet. That's, what, that's what's going to be coming up in May, and there's uh, 32 videos that they made all around the state. Um, then they had issues for September are that some people don't want to send their kids back to school. Uh, there are many issues, mask, airflow, homeschooling um, in the fall. Will it be hybrid? How will that work? Um, and it came up as someone said, there's no more, there aren't any veteran teachers anymore. Everybody's a veteran of the last couple of years and are at the same kind of uh, 
status in some ways, but that the SEL uh, for students and teachers has to be accommodated for. And, uh, and this may be, Joe, what you were talking about before about splitting the money. It's saying something here, the budget, they're looking at the 2021-22 proposed budget of $350, uh, $350, yeah, $350,000 um, that would be able to be used for free balance if needed. So I think what my take is the government at the state level, at the federal level, is trying to get as much money out to the schools as possible. It's not here yet. That's problematic because the dates don't coincide with how normally uh, an organization would go about, you know, letting the left hand and the right hand coordinate so that you're not dropping the ball, but that's not what we're encountered with. But I think um, for anyone who's in, um, involved, the intent of the district, uh, the intent of the administration and the board is to move forward and, and be um, continue to do the best we can with the resources we have. Uh, there's a director's meeting um, that I'll have that this Friday at seven o'clock where that's the directors from each county, from large cities, small cities, vocational, et cetera. Um, and then uh, Saturday, 5, the 14th at 9 a.m., I have a delegate assembly where that, where it's interesting if people would like to be part of that. You, you, there's one vote per district, but you're involved with, it's a democracy. You vote just like we vote, how the board votes on certain things and they're that's how the rules of the school board association change. So there is recourse, but it has to be brought forward within the guidelines framework of the rules that exist. So it's a it's an interesting time. That's what I have as far as um, you know um, the county or the state. I did. Um, I have calls in, I have messages and trying to coordinate how we might be able to look into LEAP grant, which is to going forward because of some of the holes that we're in that would give us a way to look at how do we get out of those holes. They're, they're basically uh, grants so that you can get a better idea of where you need to go in the future by having feasibility studies. And there were three phases to them, two of which I think were the one didn't apply to us. One, the date is, is already over, but the third would be to focus on that. And I intend to continue reaching out to both political figures and also um, Mr. Ray Marini, who's the county superintendent, to, to see how we can get access to feasibility studies so that we're not going down the same slippery slope that as we keep pulling ourselves up, we keep sliding down. So thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, and Township Committee Liaison Report, Ms. Tersich Killy is not in this evening, um, so we will move forward from that, and I'm sure she'll recap us when she has some time. And may I say something? Can, can we, as a board, uh, chip in and send flowers, please? I'd like to do that. We've done that in the past, and I think sure. it's appropriate. For sure. We can, work for that. Yeah. we can take that offline, absolutely, and we can work to um, take care of that. Thank so, you. Okay. Um, old business, is there any old business? Ms. Kamenugi, and I do want to set the record straight on some old business from tonight. Oh. So, uh, Ms. Darmo, you had asked about grade seven and eight. Uh, I discussed this at length with many, many individuals and groups. Uh, however, I did not send the update to the board to say, to explain seventh and eighth grade. So I, uh, I offer you an apology for that. I, I was mistaken. 
And so I had discussed it at length with many, many people and actually had a, had a very detailed message prepared, which I can send to the board tonight. But the point is that seventh and eighth grade was simply not possible because of the various factors we looked at. But uh, Ms. Darmo, I, I understand the question because I actually didn't provide the explanation to the board until now, so. Oh, you, you could have gotten away without apologizing because my memory is out right now. <laughs> okay, thank you for your apology. Well, I have to give credit where credit is due, you know, and if I didn't do something, then I have to also, you know, say mm -hmm. I, I actually didn't do that. So I apologize. Thank you. Is there anything new, any new business? Um, I just want to ask Mr. Mersinger on that nice note. If this, do you anticipate when the full board could hear about, um, you know, we, we've already talked about bringing back what we can of special ed in terms of room usage, like concrete things that we need to think about. Is there any date that you see that you could report to the full board on that? So um, I would say that sometime in June, we're going to have something more solid to discuss with the board. Right now, uh, we're looking at pre-K. Uh, however, the pre-K funding that we get from the state, it's very odd because instead of giving us the funding at the time that we're developing our budget for 21-22, the state suddenly announces the funding in June or July. So we can't really plan for a program to develop that pre-K until we know about that funding. So that's one. And then we're also looking at other in-district programs for elementary. Uh, I don't want to give away any details just now, but uh, yes, I can absolutely share that with the full board. Once we have a tentative plan in place, uh, I'm, I'm working with the CST on that as we speak, because we need the proper number of students to make it uh, something that's worthwhile to have in district. And what I mean by that is, number one, it has to meet the needs of all the students. And number two, if we're bringing them in from out of district placements, uh, and, we're, and we're going to save money in that regard, you know, we, we wouldn't save money if we pulled one student back into district, you know, we would have to have a certain number. So we're actually looking at all of that, primarily looking at the needs of the students first, and then looking at how we can do that in the most cost effective way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are all distributions out? All right, I would like to open these, this up for public comment on non-agenda items. And prior to anyone speaking, I'm just gonna read the one item that we did receive. Um, it was happy Teacher Appreciation Week to all of the amazing teachers in Delanca. We appreciate all that you do all year long. And that was also for Ms. Foley. Thank you. Okay, is there any other comments on non-agenda items? Okay. And Marissa, Matt Bartlett. Uh, sure, yeah. Just want to say happy Teachers Appreciation Week to all the fine staff members. They're absolutely the best. Uh, my son loved having Steph Weller, Emily McCann, Kelly Santino, and now just Fitzwater. I can't say anything bad about any of them. Plus, of course, all the teachers my daughter had before she graduated. Um, thank you for all you do. That being said, it's awful. Uh, to hear again about the 5.2 layoffs. As uh, Vince mentioned, there's going to be a point where a lot of people are going to be looking for other options for our kids just so they can get more than the bare minimum. And it's a damn shame because we have such a high quality staff here. Thank you very much. For sure. Thank you. Eric, you for Matt. I, I would like wait, to. Wait, Harry, one moment, please. Um, I okay. see a couple of hands up. I want to get those first. Eric, Mr. Messa. Good evening, everyone. I was just kind of wondering, what are the current plans for the graduation ceremonies for the eighth grade Delanco class of 2021? Is it going to be indoors, outdoors, virtual, et cetera? Just kind of want to know where the planning stands at this point. It's, it's still being discussed with Mrs. Noble as of today, so uh, we're not going to be able to share any details as of tonight. I'm never a fan of over-promising and under-delivering, so uh, we are working on a plan. We know that there's guidance from the governor about indoor and outdoor that just changed recently. So uh, that plan is still in development and parents of eighth graders uh, will receive communication. Uh, the plan is to, to receive that communication within the next couple of weeks uh, before the end of May. 
Thanks, Joe. And, and uh, you know, happy Teacher Appreciation Week to everybody, all the staff that's on here, all, all the, the school staff on here. Uh, yeah, I kind of wrestled back and forth with whether or not to give uh, one person kind of a special shout out, but I do see a name on here that I do want to give a special shout out because this uh, staff member has been through a significant amount and still uh, is, is teaching and doing everything possible to, to further his students. I know he's had a a great impact on my daughter. So I'd like to give kind of a special shout out to Mr. Mount because I do see him on here. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Miss um, Canty. Hello. Oh, let me raise lower my hand. Hello. So obviously we know it's Teacher Appreciation Week and on behalf of the DTEA, um, I, we thought that we would shed some light on some of our amazing, wonderful educators that we have here in Delanco. Um, I hope you all noticed the numbers that we have up that we're holding up and Mrs. Dharma was correct in the beginning. Those are for the years of service that we represent. Um, the years of dedicated service our DTA members have provided for this district. In total, you can't see that, obviously we can only see like 20 people on a screen, but in total we have, um, our DTA members have contributed 567 years of service. 567 years of service is over five centuries of service to the wonderful world of education and to our students in Delanco. The idea that it takes 10,000 hours to practice um, your craft and to be an expert means that every single person out that is a part of the DTA is an expert. And I believe we definitely 100% are. After March, 2020, getting this huge, like this huge curveball of COVID, and we were not, we weren't really sure what we were going to do with this, but I have, I, on behalf of the DTA, we have hit it out of the park and we are experts now in COVID teaching as well. I know Ms. Smith is going after, where's Ms. Smith is going after me. <laughs> Piggyback off of what Mrs. Canty said. Um, we just thought that we'd shed some light on some of the examples of what teachers have been doing, especially this past year, given the current situation that we're in. So I know at Pearson, teachers have been arranging virtual field trips. They taught their student new ways to communicate in different languages, arranged for published artists and illustrators to meet and draw virtually with their students, set up lunches, special meetings, and lessons to connect with all their students, whether they were in person or virtual, created a community through morning meeting, put together material bags to ensure all students had their materials and resources needed regardless of their cohort, provided additional opportunities to pick up any additional materials or special prizes or rewards that the fully virtual students earned throughout their lessons. And shout out to Ms. Cotton for assisting with that. At Walnut, they created a sixth grade welcome video when the in-person orientation couldn't happen. They have created and implemented lessons geared towards student social and emotional well-being during their advisory. They completely shifted their way of instructing and created classrooms on carts so that they could move from room to room to teach. They adjusted to students changing from not only virtual to hybrid, but switching homerooms to ensure all students were getting what they needed. They created alternative assignments for virtual students from science experiments, gym lessons, art and music lessons, and their band lessons. We also have to shout out our wonderful nurses and custodians who have been the backbone of our health and safety and just have been amazing throughout this year and our secretaries who have kept us all organized and in order throughout this crazy year. And every time there was a change with guidelines, restrictions, schedules, et cetera, you name it, what was thrown at us, uh, the staff adapted and rose to, the, and rose to this occasion. So as we approach this last month, we're, I know crazy, we're at this last month of school almost, the, uh, the DTA is very optimistic that we can close out this historical year with a settled fair contract. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kate? Oh, thank you. Um, yes, thank you again to the teachers. You know, I was a student in Delanco Public Schools as well, and uh, those teachers were very important in making me who I am today, I can tell you that. So I want to reiterate a couple things. One thing what Harry said was um, about the funding. And um, it's things are mandated, but we are definitely underfunded. And I, I'm not really worried about other districts right now. I'm worried about Delanco. 
because these are our children and these are the children that are going to be the future of Delanco. And so if we're only receiving 30% of funds that we should be receiving 70, then we should be we should be knocking on somebody's door and we need to do that. I did. I contacted uh, Singleton and I contacted Murphy. Murphy didn't reply. Uh, Singleton said we were going to get an increase of 2.9%. I don't know if you got that percent. I haven't seen anything in writing that actually said what the dollar amount was. But, and I also appreciated what Vince said tonight. Um, and why some of the members of this board voted against the budget. Because as you know, I support this school, I support our children, and I am disappointed that the township committee would not um, agree to some funding to the school, even if it was just for the program. So our budget is being voted on uh, on the 17th. You may see some no votes there as well because, um, if there's anything that I think should be cut out of a school budget, maybe some administration, but not programs and not teachers, I'm sorry. They're the backbone. Teachers and these programs are the backbone for what these kids need to move forward in their future. And so I'm sorry to see any of them go because they have worked hard, our students need them and to continue to cut those teachers or those programs are hurtful to the kids in our school system. And believe me, I will do whatever I can to knock on somebody's door to see that we get the funds that we need because the Lanco Township also was mandated to have um, that affordable housing unit that I know that several people feel it has caused a problem. And the other development is underway. They probably sold 60 already out of 105. It's moving. Unfortunately, I don't believe the school will recover any of those funds for maybe a year or two. Hopefully, Ooh. the funds that you may get will help. But the taxes, you'll receive some next year and maybe the some the following year. It was not supposed to be built as, as it happened we were um, held up by a, a developer who ran out of money and was unable to do his share of the building out there, Havanania. We're lucky he was able to sell it to DR Horton so that there are some new homes going up that will help the school's budget in the future. But um, I just wanted, wanted to reiterate that. And I also wanted to thank Vicki because I know it's a difficult position that you've been in and you've done a great job for Delanco. So good luck to you and James and thank you for your service to our town. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you had wanted to speak earlier. Yes, if I may. Um, it's a town wide problem. It's not just the school board problem because the town has, as you know, Kate has come and said, Hey, the schools is a problem. The schools are a problem, and the real estate, et cetera, et cetera. They're all tied together. They're not unique, and they're you know you can say just focus on Delanco, which we are, because that's our only realm which we can. But if we don't educate ourselves beyond Delanco, this is sort of what happens. We do things our own way, and eventually, there's a problem. Why? A lot of it is just there's not the proper communication between the um, school board and the town council, which has gotten a lot better, I'll say, because we're communicating now that never happened before, but it's it's necessary. And, you know, the I think it needs to be understood with the the reduction in force. It's a standard way that school boards operate. And so the intent is not just to, the intent is to be able to have a balanced budget to be able to be passed, which it already has been. Now is and when we receive the money to have the wisdom to put it back in to make our programs work. And when people just isolate that it's, oh, it's a, because of the administration or the administrative cost, or it's because of this simple or that, 
special education or ESL or uh, homeless or whatever, those are all, that's what's on our plate. That's what we're, you know, we're given to work with. It's not that we choose, you know, we're, we're not choosing to have these problems. We're choosing to deal with the problems the best we can. And I'm, you know, likewise, I've been in touch. I, I have, I see Troy Singleton on Sundays at soccer games, his kid and my grandnephew on the same team. So we talk about what can be done. And even his father-in-law is a former county superintendent of schools and he's at the game. We, it's, the information is just seems new if you've never had it before or the, 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 the fact that it's not to punish anyone, it's to be able to keep operating as a functioning school district because the trajectory that we're on is very problematic. So um, everybody needs to be involved and everybody needs to educate themselves. And that's what democracy is about, having different opinions. And sometimes you're in a minority, sometimes you're in a majority. And you know, if you can't be a good winner, then you can't be a good loser. And so we need both. We need people to be, okay, what do I, what do I have to do to become the majority? If, if what you're putting forth is that valuable, Hopefully that will happen. And likewise, change is a law of the universe that no one on the board or the town council made up and we just have to live with it and be patient with each other and find a way to understand that what you're passionate about is great. What you're passionate about is great, but that doesn't always connect to solving a problem. And problem solving is done in a multiple, multiple ways. So, and the more education you have, the more ways you have to understand what a problem is, the more you can bring to bear. And that's the importance of education. And I just hope we're able to serve our children. And I, I personally, as a, you know, a longtime teacher, educator, administrator want to thank our teachers they are the backbone but at the same time it's the whole spine that has to move not you know together coordinated so thank our teachers you do a wonderful job um it's a thankless job often but keep doing what you're doing it, it's getting us through and just hopefully we finish this year and we move forward in a way that we're all working together to better that that the, the the differences between us are not about per people but about issues and let's try to keep them that way so we can solve the problems that's what i would like to see going forward thank you harry you're welcome um is there any further public comment on a non-agenda item before we close Okay, I do not see any hands up. So I will now close the public comment aspect. Marissa, of oh, there was I'm sorry. Oh, wait, there was Sam James. Oh, hold on. Okay, Sam, sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, you know, I just wanted to take a minute, first of all, as you know, the president of DISA, which, as you know, is a volunteer board. Um, thank all of the volunteers here in town, those on school board members. Um, and say that, you know, I can respect the challenges that you all face as a volunteer. On the same hand, I definitely want to shout out and, and give mine and Stacy's support to the teachers and the amazing job that they do. Um, I can tell you that I've been blown away, um, you know, with what Stacy's tried to do with some days, you know, five plus kids here in the house remotely trying to learn. So I can only imagine, you know, what it's like for the teachers. Um, you know, grew up in town here, uh, probably will die here. Um, but, you know, again, I can't say enough like everybody else. Our teachers are, are amazing. And, um, you know, I thank them for everything that, that they've done for our kids and that they'll continue to do for our kids. And, uh, you know, I wholeheartedly support them. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, Mrs. Campbell. Mrs. Campbell. 
Hi, I am the one that told you guys to buy Miss Donnelly or Miss Canty a house last time. But um, I uh, wanted to just say thank you again to all the teachers, all the staff, the principal. You know, I have to say that there's some videos uh, around on Facebook with Miss Weller. Um, and I, I'm sorry, my, I'm drawing a fog, but um, I, uh, Miss McCann's sister, I can never remember her name. I'm so sorry because I don't have her yet with my daughter or my, or my son. But um, these videos are hilarious. <laughs> they're pretty much just, you know, they're training the kids on, you know, COVID. And, but they're also keeping it with a positive note and trying to keep it fun. But, you know, one thing I know from working from home is it is not easy when you have kids at home with you. I have no idea how these teachers are teaching a class, you know, from Zoom and teaching their children at the same time. So, you know, a lot of times people just fail to realize that they're teaching your, your student, but they also have their own kids at home they got to teach too, or, you know, connect to the Zoom or, you know, all the countless issues that have happened. So my hat's off to all the teachers. You'll never get paid enough <laughs> for what you do for how you, you know, develop our children. Cause it is, you know, taking the village to raise a child kind of, you know, thing. So, you know, half of our kids in the school are Sam James kids. Cause you know, he's got a, a village himself. So, um, you know, we just, we appreciate everything you guys do and, and we'll never be able to, to give you any amount of flowers or gifts or anything to show our gratitude. So thank you to everybody for that. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Conroy. Uh, yes, I, I do want to say thank you to all the teachers. I just, I can't even stress enough, just like Colleen did, just how much they're doing for the kids this year. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a shame that on Teacher Appreciation Day, we're discussing cutting five teachers no, and no, no. we That's are, nice. wait, wait, Harry, let me finish. But it's that wrong. we're cutting it's five teachers, teachers and that we are sitting here without a teacher's contract. I don't understand how this can, the teacher's contract can still be an issue this many years later. Since my daughter's been in kindergarten, this has been a problem. I don't understand why they, why they still don't have a contract. Is anyone going to respond to that? I mean, I think we've just heard all through the night that there's a terrible uncertainty about where the finances are coming from and what they will be. That, and, and it is not five teachers that are being um, RIF for the moment. It's not. Okay. So that part of what happens is that misinformation gets spread and people don't clarify it before they go around and uh you know harry we don't tell them what's getting cut them. either like we're not telling them thank you vince that's my problem too there's what's a that? lot of secrecy that happens with it's, this school board that is absolutely insane it's personnel you can't you, anybody in in employment you can't it's not just uh, endemic to teaching it's any employment contract i, mean, I will throw this out there as a small comment um this this issue has been on the we've discussed at the last meeting and, and uh, previously the possibility of moving to a committee of the whole structure instead of dealing with issues um of the issues that can be discussed in public uh, instead of having those discussions in committees, potentially switching to a format where we have two board meetings per month and discuss more issues in the public. So we'll come back to that at a future meeting, but um, I think that would be uh, a helpful remedy to some of the, the perception of the, um, the siloing of information on this board. So that's my comment. I'd like to make a comment here on personnel issues. We cannot discuss them because they're personnel. We can't talk about the teacher's contract and they can't talk about it either. You know, as for, you know, the uh, impact that this is going to have the, the uh, budget on teachers, we can't discuss that until after 
you know, we approved everything. Probably in the next day or so, Joe is going to talk to the teachers that are going to be affected. As for a committee of the whole, Steve, what that's going to involve is a lot more meetings for all of us. And if it is a personnel matter or a private matter, it's still going to have to be, you know, well, how can I say it? It's still not going to be for public information. It would have to be, you know, an executive session. Correct. That's true. But I, I still think it's, I still would love to see us move to a committee of the whole. And I think a lot of people in this town would appreciate it. Just being able to see more of the process. Wasn't there a training that's going to be happening on June 30th? So before we make our decisions about what we want, why don't we get informed? I think that would be a better, more educationally sound way to go about making such a decision. There, there are pros and cons to it. So yeah, uh, Harry, thank you. I, I am working with Jesse Adams to schedule training for the board in June to talk about committee of the whole so that the board is fully informed of what it means, the steps. And, um, you know, Jesse Adams is the right person to explain that to the board. So I would just ask that the board members be patient, that we are planning that for June. We're looking at June 30th. And uh, Marissa, Harry, and I will be discussing that with Jesse. Correct. Okay. Is there any additional public comment on a non agenda item? If not, I'm going to close that aspect of the meeting um, and I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Have a good one, everyone.